Hey, I'm back with another first try art supply video. I finally got myself a pad of the Arches Cold Press. Specifically, this is the Rough. As you may know, I recently tried out this new Baohong paper in my local art supply store and fell in love with it. I love its heavyweight rough texture and I compared it recently to the Arches Hot Press and being very confused that the Hot Press was just miserable to work with. <laughs> even though I thought that this was everyone's favorite brand of paper. I'm back with the rough press and I'm just doing a very simple little illustration here just to try it out. Already I am seeing great similarities between this and the Baohong that I fell in love with. Um, it's about the same price point, I think, per unit. Unit being two cents per square inch. And I suspect the Arches Rough is actually a little bit more absorbent for water, especially considering how much it buckles. And this is just a very quick first try, um, so I don't really have anything deep to say about it, other than the fact that this one is good, it's worth the money way the hell better than the Arches Hot Press. I really wish that wasn't my first exposure to the brand. It is really surprising to see how big of a difference it is between textures and that it's not just the name of the company that is important in this situation. There are a couple of things that are really, really important to me in watercolor paper and that is the ability to layer without it going flat and muddy. The spread is kind of a big thing for me too. I took a bunch of papers that I just have around to compare each other's layering properties. I used to struggle a lot unnecessarily. I thought that light fastness was king and paint quality was the most important thing. And there were lots of times where I would admire some artist's ability to make beautiful watercolor paintings that were just vibrant, rich, and reflective, and crisp, and all of that. And working with really nice paints on, let's say, cheaper papers, I struggled a lot unnecessarily because I found that I couldn't layer colors in the same way. It would look really flat and dull. I couldn't make a really nice gradient. My colors would be vibrant when I put them down, but when they dry, they would be pale and almost disappearing. So that forced me to make extra layers on a paper that doesn't layer very well. And, and so it was easy to believe that I was just not as good at watercolor painting as I thought that I could be when it really is just the paper. And I have said before that I really wish that there was a standard to hold these companies to who call their papers watercolor papers. And yet you cannot actually do watercolor techniques on them. I feel like those papers should have a different name entirely. Or they should just produce an economical student grade paper that actually allows you to do watercolor techniques on it and not gaslight people into thinking that they just cannot improve their artwork. That there is something wrong that they're doing when actually it's just the paper messing you around and that they can't actually reasonably afford to study watercolor and learn from it the way that somebody with a lot of money could, right? Here are a few samples that I used to compare to the Arches Rough and the Baohong that I enjoy. Uh, way down here is the Bockingford <laughs> Blue. <laughs> I don't know what is the deal with this paper. I kept flipping it thinking I did it backwards, but this is a very can somebody come pick up their dad kind of paper. I don't know what is happening and why it looks like a napkin makes weird little spots on the surface. I don't know if this was just a defective huge sheet of paper, but it just, no, <laughs> what is happening? This Canson watercolor board, which is a very inexpensive paper to play with. These hot press papers give you nice hard edges because they're not very absorbent. So if you struggle to paint within the lines, this might be interesting to you. But other than that, colors don't build very well. Any layers I paint on top of it look weird and flat, like it's just sitting there. And honestly, this is kind of where I inserted the Arches hot press. It's very similar in fashion. I feel like there must be a specific style or technique that really likes intense control so you don't get very much bleeding. I also tried the Opus watercolor paper that is a store brand where I've been buying these and honestly it's not that bad. It's a bit lightweight but the color building was really nice on this one. And then I was comparing the Baohong artist quality and the Arches Rough. 
and you can really see a difference in color building if you really have trouble building deep dark colors for deep dark scenes again that's usually a paper problem so i got gorgeous dark colors there is a slight difference though the Baohong paper has a more reflective quality to my eye, meaning that the colors seem a little bit more transparent and glowy, where it felt a little bit more opaque on the arches. There's also this weird surface texture on the arches that I didn't notice until much later, but you can see these tiny, tiny little flecks that did not absorb any color, and I'm really curious to know why. I don't think it's super noticeable and is not a game changer for me, but it's definitely something that I don't see on the others. Other than that, I like it. Uh, it definitely needs to be taped down, but I'm very happy to be able to give Arches another try and see what all the fuss is about. Just have to stay a little closer to the cold press than the hot press. And thank you for subscribing and make a new art video every Thursday. I also sell original art, sketchbooks, really nice prints, handmade calendars, pet commissions, and even some one-of-a-kind wearable art jewelry. I also have a sketchbook club on Patreon, where we fill our sketchbooks according to a theme, and some tiers even get original sketches mailed to them.